you may have noticed that we actually left out some details in the Gerber Newman algorithm. And specifically, we need to resolve two questions, how to compute between this and how to select the number of clusters. For the first question, let's say that we want to compute the betweenness of paths starting at node uh, A. And we'll perform a breadth first search starting from A, and therefore we can reorganize the graph as, as, as something uh, on the right here. We can see that this is the first level of the graph, the second level of the graph, third level, and the fourth level. And then we can count the number of shortest paths from A to all other nodes of the network with this reorganization. For example, uh, we can see that the number of shortest paths from A to F is two, and the number of shortest paths from A to G is one. Therefore, it's easy to see that the number of shortest paths from, from A to I is actually the sum of F to, uh, sum of F, A to F and A to G, which is three here. Now we can compute all the other numbers uh, uh, similarly. Now, after we do this, we can then add uh, the edge flows based on the parent, parent value. For example, um, uh, we can see that the parent value, basically the node value of F is two, therefore the edge flow here will be two. And the node value of G is one, therefore the edge below it is, uh, also has an edge flow of one. And similarly for all the other edges. And note that this is only for, uh, for all the shortest paths starting from node A, right? Therefore, we need to repeat all this B, BFS reference search process for each starting node U. And then we will add up the values for each edge as the final flow. And this will give us a, the final between this score for the, for the graph. Now, the second question is how to select the number of clusters or communities. And remember that a community are just the sets of tightly connected nodes. Therefore, we can actually define a concept for modularity uh, denoted by Q. And it's just a measure of how well a network is partitioned into communities. Now, given a partitioning of the network into groups or communities, and we denote uh, each community or group as S here, then we can compute the modularity of this uh, partitioning as follows. Basically, for each group, we will just compute the difference between the number of edges within the group, and this is easy to, easy to count. Um, we will compute the number of edges within this group uh, and the expected number of edges within this group, and we will take the difference. Now the question is, how do we compute this expected number of edges within this group S? To do this, we need to introduce the notion or concept of rewire random networks. So basically, given a real graph on network G, which has n nodes and m edges, we need to first construct a rewire network G prime. And this re rewire network G prime needs to have the same degree distribution, but random connections. So what do we mean by that? Basically the expected number expected number of edges between the nodes i and j of degree ki and kj would be equal to ki times kj over 2n. Why is this? Let's, let's imagine that we are throwing an edge into a graph of m edges. Let's say that we're throwing this edge uh, into a graph of m edges. Then the probability of this edge happen to connect node i and j would be two times ki over 2m times kj over 2m, where this ki over 2m is actually the probability that one end 
of this edge happen to connect I and similar for J. So why is this 2M instead of M here? This is because the total degrees, the total number of degrees in the network is actually 2M because you have M edges and therefore the degree is uh, two times that. And another question is why is that two here? This is because this green M of this S can either can either uh, be assigned to node I or node J. Therefore, we have a multiplier of two here. So this tells us why we have this uh, this equation. Therefore, and in the end, the expected number of edges between I and J would be this number times n, which is Ki times Kj over 2m, which is uh, stated here. Then uh, we can actually double check that with this expected number uh, of edges between I and J, it can, it can recover uh, the original number of expected number of edges. Uh, for example, let's say that we're given a real graph G on N nodes and M edges, then the expected number of edges in this rewire random graph G prime would be still M, uh, which, is, which is the number which is uh, the same as the number of edges in the original graph. Now, once we figure out how to uh, compute this expected number of edges between two nodes, we can go ahead to compute the modularity uh, of each of some partitioning of a graph. And specifically, we can compute it as follows, where in each of the, each of the group, will actually go through all the node pairs inside the group. So this node pair would be a node I and node J. And we will compute the difference between A, I, J and the expected number of edges between node I and node J. And this A, I, J is the one of the entry uh, in the adjacency matrix. So A, I, J equals to one if there is an edge between i and j and it's zero otherwise so basically we are using this um we're using this equation to compute the modularity of some partitioning of graph g and we have a normalizing constant one over m here just to keep this uh, modularity q such that the range is between minus one to one and note that these these two parts in the red boxes, they are actually equivalent. Now, we know that this modularity values, they take the range of um, between minus one and one, right? And that it's actually positive if the number of edges within the group exceeds the expected number. Therefore, it's more like uh, it has more modularity, it's more densely connected within the graph. And normally, when uh, Q is larger than let's, let's say 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. That means uh, it, it is a significant uh, community structure. And once we figure out how to compute this modularity for, for any partitioning, we can then use this modularity to select the number of clusters. For example, uh, remember our previous one of our previous graph, and we used the Gerber Newman algorithm to do the hierarchical clustering and have this result. And we can actually find that the modularity actually is largest when we have three communities. Therefore, we can set the number of clusters to three. Now, here we may you may be wondering since we are using the modularity to select the number of clusters anyway, why not just optimize the modularity directly? And this will be the focus of the next part in this lecture.